Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, I'm gonna highlight five all mountain snowboards. These are boards that are gonna be fun in a wide variety of snow conditions and great for riding all over the resort. All right guys, all these boards are gonna have one thing in common and that is directional shaping. So outside the front contact point, which is the widest point on the front of the snowboard there, the nose is gonna be a little bit longer than the tail of the snowboard. So if you do take the board into softer snow or on a powder day, that full length of the board is gonna come into play and you're gonna get a little bit more float on the front to help stay on top of the soft snow. And the first board on this list is the Arbor Brian Aguchi Pro Camber. This is a directional twin snowboard, so it's got that directional shaping going on, but between the contact points, it's essentially a true twin snowboard. It has two millimeters of taper, but that's pretty negligible. On hard pack, it's gonna ride pretty much exactly the same in either direction. It has a flex just on the stiffer side of medium, so it's gonna offer some pretty good stability, and it also runs Arbor's camber system. So it's a full positive camber profile, but it also has Arbor's uprise fenders. Right at the contact points, the base and edge is lifted up just a little bit so you get that full powerful precise camber feel but it's not quite as catchy and it also runs arbor's grip tech which is just a couple of added contact points right under your feet that's going to help the board bite down on ice or more firm snow as you're out there exploring and that's exactly what comes to mind when i think of the aguchi pro camber it's a great board for exploring finding natural features getting in the trees maybe hunting for some powder stashes as well but you could also take this board in the park i wouldn't say that that is its strong point but if you want to take some park laps with the friends it's definitely going to be fun for that as well Overall, I think this board offers some great stability. It's got some good pop, it runs a centered base as well, so it's nice and fast out there. And it's a solid choice for just getting out there and exploring when you're not quite sure what the conditions are gonna be like. Next on the list, I've got the K2 Manifest. I rode this board on a pretty deep day down in Washington, also spent a lot of time exploring out in Whistler with it. And I think it's a very capable, very versatile snowboard overall. It's a true directional twin board. It's got no taper, no setback. The only thing helping you out in powder is that directional shaping, but it is gonna float better than your typical twin snowboard. You're gonna find a flex on the stiffer side of medium with the manifest, so it's gonna offer some good stability. It also has a camber dominant profile, pretty much full positive camber with a little bit of rocker in the tail, a little bit of rocker in the nose, but overall gonna have that camber feel. And it also has a lot of carbon built into it. So that's gonna to help to keep the weight down, but give you a little bit more pop, more energy and more stability out of this snowboard. It runs a centered base, so it's nice and fast out there. And really, I just had a lot of fun navigating that steeper, more technical terrain down in Washington. It did good in the powder. It was a lot of fun for carving. It offers a lot of stability and energy as well. So I think all that combined makes the manifest a great choice to consider. Third on this list, I've got the Capita Mercury. I rode this board out in Jackson Hole, which has some pretty steep technical terrain. I rode some powder with it as well. And I just thought that this was a very, very capable snowboard. It is slightly directional, but I actually think this is probably the most freestyle friendly board on this list. It has about a half inch setback and no taper. So if you do wanna take this board in the park or do some more freestyle type riding, just shift those bindings half an inch forward and it'll be centered in the side cut there. It's got a flex on the stiffer side of medium combined with a camber dominant profile, a little bit of rocker in the tail, a little bit of rocker in the nose, but overall gonna have that camber feel, gonna offer some good stability and help you out as you're out there exploring, especially at a resort like Jackson Hole where you do find yourself in those higher impact sketchy scenarios pretty often. It runs a centered base and also has an added contact point right in the middle of the side cut to help bite down and give you more grip when you need it. It's called Death Grip from Capita, but the Mercury is is a really fun, versatile snowboard. If you're looking for something that's just a little bit stiffer, gonna be good for exploring, can help you out a little bit in powder, but still pretty freestyle friendly, this is gonna be a great choice. All right, guys, there's a couple more boards I wanna highlight for you, but before we move on, I wanna let you know that every board on this list is linked down in the description below. If you wanna check them out in a little more detail or read a little bit about these boards, make sure to go check out the video description. And the fourth board I wanna highlight is the GNU Anti-Gravity. This is another board I was able to test out in Jackson Hole, and it's probably the most free ride oriented board on this list and gonna offer the best powder performance as well. 
This is the most directional board I'm highlighting today, and it runs a one inch setback and a slight taper, just around a three millimeter taper, combined with a flex that's on the stiffer side of medium, coming through with some good stability, as well as a camber dominant profile. It runs Mervin's C3 profile, so overall gonna have that full positive camber shape, gonna give you that more powerful, precise feel that you're looking for in this style of snowboard, but does have a little bit of rocker between the feet. It's not enough to offset the camber, but it is gonna create some nice flex zones. So that's just gonna help you out loading up more tension in the board, help you to get more energy out of it, particularly when you're loading it up for ollies or any situation where you're trying to flex the snowboard. This one actually runs an extruded base, so that's gonna help keep the cost down. Also gonna make base repairs a little bit easier to get done at home. And the last thing I wanna bring up is magnet traction. So that's that wavy style side cut. It offers the most grip out of any added contact point system. It's gonna really help you out as you're out there exploring whenever you come across that more variable or icy snow. This is probably the least park friendly board on the list, but it's gonna be great for exploring, going on hikes, getting in the trees, riding powder, or even looking for natural features as well. And the last board I wanna highlight is the Ride Warpig. This is another really versatile snowboard and one that I've owned personally, spent a lot of time on it, and it has a volume shifted design. So this will be a great choice for those of you with larger boot sizes. It's got a naturally wide design and gives you the option to size down. So you're still gonna find that width even at much smaller sizes. It's gonna offer a more maneuverable feel. It's gonna give the board more surface area and allow you to really lay the board more aggressively on edge without having to worry about heel or toe drag as much. You're gonna find a solid medium flex on the Warpig and it runs a rocker dominant profile, but it's pretty much flat for most of the board with some rocker in the tail and rocker in the nose and also has a slight taper, just around a one centimeter taper. It's gonna give you a little bit of added benefit in the powder. There's quite a bit of carbon built into this board to help keep it nice and responsive. It'll offer more energy and get you a little bit more pop out of this guy as well. And it does also run a centered base. So for me, the highlights on the War Pig is that it's a lot of fun for carving. It's gonna offer some pretty good float and powder, and it's still pretty fun in the park as well. One last board as an honorable mention is the Jones Mountain Twin. I've ridden several variations of this board, but they did change it for this year. It's a little bit of a softer flex and they added their 3D contour base this year. So I think it's gonna be way more park friendly. It's got magnet traction, it's camber dominant, and just a bonus I think might be worth checking out for you guys as well. All right guys, those are my five all mountain recommendations for 2021. I hope this video helps you out as you're out there looking for a new snowboard this year. If you did get some value out of it, please make sure to give this video a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. See you in the next one soon. Oh, <laughs>